One thing that I do believe pretty strongly though, is that working from home right now during 2020, during a global pandemic is not the same thing as normal remote work. And I feel like that distinction is getting lost in many of the discussions. Hey devs, welcome to the Goobar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development, working in teams, and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of connection, inspiration, and continued learning so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. Now, as much of the global tech workforce has transitioned to remote work here in 2020, the experiences have been mixed, and inevitably, individuals, teams, and organizations are evaluating whether remote work is the right long-term move. This week, we're taking a look at how remote work in 2020 is not normal remote work. We'll explore a few of the unique challenges that 2020 has presented to remote employees and teams and outline a few concrete steps you can take to better adapt to working remotely in 2020 and beyond. This podcast is supported by awesome listeners like you. If you enjoy the podcast and find this episode useful, please consider subscribing and leaving a review. It helps out the show and lets me know how to best serve you all with future episodes. If you have a question or would like to suggest a future topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at goobar.io for your question or topic to possibly be featured in a future episode. And now let's dive into today's topic. Hey devs, welcome back. I hope you're having a, a great week and uh, are just generally doing well. Today, we're talking about remote work. Uh, and I wanna ask you, how are you feeling about working from home right now? Assuming you are, of course. As I look around the internet, uh, as I've had chats with uh, other people, um, it appears to me that there are mixed results regarding working from home currently. You know, Many are loving the new remote work lifestyle, while many others are stressed, feel they're working more hours, uh, and feeling pressure to maintain productivity while working from home under very less than ideal conditions. Um, you know, I don't believe that either of these groups are necessarily right or wrong. Everyone's situation is unique, um, and it's not my place to say whether, you know, remote work is right for you or not. One thing that I do believe pretty strongly, though, is that Working from home right now, during 2020, during a global pandemic, is not the same thing as normal remote work. And I feel like that distinction is getting lost in many of the discussions lately. You know, with large companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, um, Square Enix, um, uh, many others have seen continuing to adopt more permanent remote work policies, it looks as if remote work in some shape or form is supposed to stick around for a while and, and likely to continue to grow. And like I said, I don't think remote work is right for everyone. It's not, and it doesn't need to be. However, I don't think the current realities of working from home are inaccurate or a fair representation of what a remote work culture can be. You know, according to Buffer's annual state of remote survey, Remote employees largely want to stay remote. However, if 2020 is your first foray into remote work, uh, I wonder if that's still the case. And I would guess for many people who are first getting a taste of remote here in 2020, it's probably not the case. You know, many of us are extra stressed out right now. There are more distractions throughout the day. Many of us have kids learning from home or extra deliveries coming throughout the day. We have partners working from home. We're working uh, around our pets' schedules. Um, we can't get out of the house to really work like we may otherwise have been able to. We can't meet up with people to work, to chat, brainstorm, or collaborate. Uh, there's a lot kind of working against us that's not the typical remote experience. On top of all of that, 
It seems that many companies that are adopting remote work lately still haven't really shifted to a remote first mindset. All day meetings are even more draining right now than they would be in person. Employees are feeling pushed to work nights and weekends. Defaulting to real time communication adds to the pressure of being always at a keyboard, even when it's at odds with the realities of being at home. You know, if you need to take your dog out to go to the bathroom, it's hard to be at your keyboard to immediately answer questions that are coming through via Slack, for example. In short, translating the on-site work experience to the home is challenging and in many ways just doesn't work in practice. This leaves employees feeling overwhelmed, less creative, more isolated, and longing for a return to uh, at-person or excuse me, in-person uh, work normalcy. All in all, there are many things which are very atypical of enjoyable and successful remote work going on in this present climate. And I worry that uh, this, uh, during this big initial push into remote work, you know, let, let's call this uh, remote work V1 at scale, that the evaluation by organizations, managers, and individuals will fail to take into account everything else going on right now. Now, I fear that this will keep many from getting to remote work V2 at scale, in which there are hopefully fewer abnormal circumstances going on and that we can start to get more of the traditional benefits of a really positive remote work culture. Now, if you can't tell already, I do have a pretty high opinion of working remotely. You know, I've hinted at uh, a number of benefits already. I've hinted that it can be a positive thing, and, and I really believe that. So what does remote work usually look like and how is it maybe a positive thing for, for many types of teams, companies, organizations? Well, in my experience, and I've been remote for about four years now, um, like I said, this, this situation is, is not indicative of any of those four years. You know, for me, remote work has generally been filled with a lot more connection, uh, flexibility, and variety than we've had this year. You know, I, I really miss getting out of my home office and working from a coffee shop or a library or co-working spaces. These were all things that I used to do on a regular basis. Um, I miss being able to change locations if my home is too loud or too distracting, or if I simply need a change of environment to help jumpstart my productivity or my creativity again. I miss meeting with local coworkers or friends to chat, to, to work together, to brainstorm, to plan or organize events. Um, I miss that social component that, again, I'm not getting here in 2020. You know, the, the lack of one-on-one -on -one chats, the lack of meetups and conferences definitely has me feeling uh, disconnected this year. It has me feeling um, isolated, uh, uninspired, honestly, as well. You know, those types of in-person events usually would really fill me up and motivate me and get me excited and inspired to come back and do great work. In the past, I've been able to travel and meet my remote teams in person. Um, and this has always been really great for building trust, for improving communication, and generally I feel has led to better working relationships together. However, this year, um, I've only been able to meet my remote team uh, one time. And, and I live in the same city with those people and still have only got to meet them one time. And that has definitely slowed down the rate at which we can develop a rapport and, and work more efficiently together. And that doesn't mean that we don't have a good working relationship. We do. I think I've gotten to know my team quite well and feel like we work well together. But I do think that meeting your team in person once in a while throughout the year can improve that connection and the productivity. And, you know, speaking of travel, it's difficult right now to get away and recharge outside of work. Even just going outside for a relaxing walk is not as simple or relaxing as it used to be. And this has accumulated over the year, and I definitely feel myself, you know, getting fatigued of the current situation, which again can start to seep into work and I think has a little bit of a negative impact on how we feel about working remotely right now. And like I said, again, none of this 
matches up my previous experiences working remotely. So what's the future of remote work then? Um, well, I don't expect all companies to shift to remote first work. Um, not all can, not all of them should. And, you know, I know that my experience working remotely is, is likely to be very different from your experience. I don't think it's a one size fits all thing. But if you thought that you might like remote work and you aren't enjoying it here in 2020, I hope some of the things I've called out in this episode resonate with you and it maybe gives you some hope that your remote work dreams are still possible under different circumstances. You know, hopefully we will get to move on from COVID and the, the pandemic sometime next year, and hopefully things will start to go back to more of those uh, regular circumstances for us. You know, in the meantime, I do worry that the efficacy of remote work will be unfairly judged during this period, um, but I'm also encouraged by the number of people that find themselves adapting favorably to remote work and are acknowledging the realities of the pandemic and still find themselves wanting to make a more permanent shift into that remote work lifestyle moving forward. Uh, I, I hope that increase stays around, um, not because we're all forced into it, but because more teams find themselves, you know, adapting to it favorably, finding themselves enjoying it and wanting to, you know, make changes such as emphasizing uh, outcomes and increased trust with employees and, you know, greater emphasis on just the human beings that we are, rather than just looking at us as, you know, uh, mindless, nameless people typing away at keyboards all day. There's a recent CNBC article that uh, called out that changes in leadership are needed to make the effective shift into remote work. And I, I really believe that's the case. Um, I think we're seeing that in some organizations, you know, the ones that are being forward thinking and giving employees stability. Um, and I hope that we will continue to see more of that. Now, in my experience, effective remote work has enabled me to work around life rather than living around my work. And I think that's really powerful. That's something I wish for all of us. And I see increased remote work as a powerful tool in helping us realize that for more people. So you know, we've talked a little bit about, you know, how I see remote work this year not being normal. Um, and also a little bit about how I hope that, you know, we get to try out more typical remote work, you know, in the future, hopefully the near future for all of us. Um, but I do want to just end with a few things here, a few tips to maybe help you uh, be a little bit more effective and, and maybe just a little bit happier during the current stage of remote work that we're in. Um, so just a few things that I have found really helpful over my years working remotely. The, the first is routine. Having a routine really helps to define, you know, a greater sense of work-life boundaries. And that's so important while working from home. And I think even more so right now. So if you can try and have some sense of a routine where you are starting work at the same time every day and ending work at the same time every day, I think that can be really, really helpful for us to just sort of uh, maintain that separation of personal life and work life while it's all being done in the same place. Another big key, I think, is to take breaks. So again, you can you know carve this into your routine, but having a break in the middle of the day for lunch or maybe you know, an outside walk or something can be really important. You know, if you need to take your dog out a couple times a day, planning that into your routine as well and treating those as breaks where you maybe uh, take the dog for a walk and grab a cup of coffee and stretch your legs a little bit. Those things, those little breaks can be really helpful in just helping us stay um, fresh and motivated uh, throughout the day. Another big one that I think is, is important and requires a bit more team buy-in is to try and move towards having fewer meetings and, and try to move towards having asynchronous communication. So, you know, the endless Zoom meetings that we're all in now or, or Google Meet or Microsoft Teams, whatever video chatting you're doing, these endless meetings are really draining, you know, especially for, um, you know, hours at a time and tiny little cramped home offices. They are just not a great way to keep employees happy and productive. You know, so if you can 
remove any of those standing meetings. If we can combine meetings at times, um, those can be great tools. You know, making sure that we're scheduling the meetings for the right amount of time. You know, don't schedule an hour when 30 minutes is needed. And likewise, you know, if you need an hour, don't schedule for 30 minutes, knowing that you're just going to need another meeting if you um, have to have it. Um, another uh, a good way to, to go about this then is to favor async communication, where things are maybe worked on via a shared document ahead of time or where some of the discussion happens in other places, such as in um, Jira or Confluence or GitHub issues or Google Docs, things like that can really help limit the amount of time you have to spend in the face-to-face -face meetings. Um, and then the last one that I'll call out is I really encourage you as an individual to take time off, you know, take as much time off as you can and you can afford. Really, even, even if you're not going anywhere, it can really be good and important for your mental health to just get away a little bit, recharge, hopefully relax. And then conversely, if you are in a position of leadership or management, I really encourage you to uh, encourage your team, your direct reports to take that time off. You know, if you see them on Slack chatting on their days off, you know, try and encourage them to actually take the break, you know, try and encourage people to take a day off here and there to take a week off here and there, especially with holidays coming up or whatnot. It can be really important because we, we need to stay fresh now more than ever. Um, so that's just been a, a few quick tips that I think you can start to adopt in your, you know, your personal work situation and your teams as well to just kind of uh, stay fresh to avoid burning out. And hopefully we can, you know, continue to adapt and eventually hopefully go back to kind of a regular, um, you know, energizing, flexible remote work situation come 2021. All right, devs, that's about it for this week's episode. You know, we talked a bit about just uh, how remote work is is great or can be great for many people, but that 2020 just isn't quite it. You know, remote work in 2020 is not normal. And I hope that if you're struggling with it in 2020, that you'll keep that in mind as you're evaluating it and thinking about whether it's right for you in the long run. Uh, and if you're in a position of leadership, I encourage you to think about how can you adapt your team's practices and workflows to take advantage of the flexibility of remote work and try and not just translate the, the in-person experience over to the current situation, the current realities of uh, COVID and the pandemic and remote working. And then finally, we just wrapped up with a few quick tips that you can do throughout your day to try and bring a little bit more routine and structure to your days, how to carve out some uh, flexibility through your day, and also you know how to um, avoid endless meetings and how to take vacation and just, again, stay a little bit more refreshed and recharged throughout your, your days and your weeks. And, and hopefully we can get into next year and things will start to normalize a little bit more. And then we can give Remote Work V2 a try and, and hopefully find that it is, you know, acceptable and agreeable for many more people. So we'll go ahead and end it there. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development and career. And remember, if you have a question or topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. And you can send those in to podcast at goobar.io for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs.